in an exclusive interview with the deputy chief patrol agent in charge for the Rio Grande Valley, he tells me agents are seeing a sharp increase in the number of unaccompanied children crossing along the border here in the valley alone. In fact, in the last 60 days, agents have seen more than 3,500 unaccompanied children crossing the border alone. We had a group yesterday that was comprised of children ranging in ages from one-year-old, uh, a pair of three-year-olds, five-year-olds, a seven-year-old, and a 12-year-old. That group of children left alone in the middle of the night in 30-degree weather. It's heart-wrenching. It's another one of those times when it's just, it's alarming that children that young would be out there put in the elements. But why the increase? Agents say it's a tactic. These children are arriving in family groups, and then they're caught with their families they're sent back across the border, and the next thing you know, they end up on the riverbank with a phone number on their shirt. Two or three days after that, we'll catch the same parent we caught them with the first time uh, in a different smuggling group. So there's a lot of separation happening by themselves in order to improve their chances of getting across the border, taking advantage again of the loophole uh, that unaccompanied children uh, have when we take them and send them off to ORR. So it works. That loophole works. It does work. Some of the youngest are just months old. So the youngest that we've seen uh, here is seven months old out on the river. Uh, we routinely see them that are toddlers. Uh, they're, you know, a year and a half, two, three years old. Sometimes they're in, in the, the care and custody, if you will, of their older sibling who might be eight. Uh, it's, it's a pretty terrible thing uh, to think that an eight-year-old is going to take care of a toddler or an infant. Uh, but we see it. And in several cases, left in the hands of strangers. Within those groups, there are criminal aliens. There are sex predators. That's why it's such a, a huge uh, issue for us when we see these poor children out there. I mean, it's, it's heart-wrenching, for one, uh, to see them. And number two, to realize that they've been in these stash houses with people they don't know, records they, they don't know what they are, and also the health issues that could accompany that. And they say this is only the beginning. The talk of DACA and amnesty and all of the things that are being, that's, that's one thing, but the smuggling organizations are using that language in order to draw people and then thus make money. They don't care what happens to them afterwards, and that's, that's the worst part about it. Once Border Patrol agents find an unaccompanied child, they are evaluated and treated to make sure that they are okay medically. Once they're medically cleared, then they're transferred to the Office of Refugee and Resettlement. There, the federal government takes them to facilities throughout the country through that Office of Refugee and Resettlement. Putting local first in Edinburgh, I'm Sydney Hernandez.